okay so hey guys welcome back to the dnn medical series today i'll be talking about the skull i'll be talking about the internal features of the skull for the basal part of the skull so i'm just going to tell you the different foramens the different nerves that come through these foramens and the different bones that makes up the basal part of the skull So let's begin by labeling the bone and the different fossils. So the skull or the basal part of the skull has three fossils. So we have an anterior fossil, we have a middle cranial fossil, and a posterior cranial fossil. Posterior means back, anterior means front. So anterior cranial fossil, middle cranial fossil looks like a butterfly and posterior cranial fossa at the back. So we're gonna start by looking at this. So the first hole we see here is the frontal sinus. So when we talk about the sinus, we're talking about like air space, it is filled with air. So this is the air sinus or the frontal air sinus. So mm -hmm. Right, so this is basically the anterior cranial fossa as I just said, I just told you guys about the frontal air sinus. Now we're going to jump into the anterior cranial fossa to talk about the different aspects. So right here, you see this elevation right here in this bone. So this entire bone here is the ethmoid bone. You can see the ethmoid bone right here and the elevation in the center, we call that crista galli. Crista galli is the elevation in the center. And at the sides, of the crystal galley we have the cribriform plate so you can see it right here these are these little holes here lateral to the crystal galley cribriform plate and this area here is responsible for the olfactory nerve so this area responsible for the olfactory nerve and that basically helps with the sense of smell because it goes through the nose so that's the literally the ethmoid bone, crystal galley, cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. And here we're going to see another small tiny hole above crystal galley. I don't know if you guys can see that. So right here, this small hole here is the foramen cecum. So right above crystal galley is the foramen cecum. Right. So going down in the anterior cranial fossa we're going down now to the these little holes right here so it's two of them so they're symmetrical so these are the optic canal so you can see this this probe going straight through it and it goes through the eye at the front so this is the optic canal and the optic nerve travels through this canal to so look and I take it through the eye so that's the optic canal for the optic nerve so remember olfactory nerve for smelling in the ethmoid bone here here optic canal for the eye and this bone here that occupies the middle like the butterfly shape is the sphenoid bone so the sphenoid bone occupies the middle cranial fossa and so let's talk about the sphenoid bone so right above the sphenoid bone is this flat plane bone right here and we call this flat bone the planar planar sphenoidale or the jugum sphenoidale so this flat bone right above the sphenoid bone in the middle cranial fossa so the most prominent thing in the middle cranial fossa is the cella tercica. So right at this depression right here, we have the cella tercica. And this is where the pituitary gland sits. Here above the cella tercica, we have tuberculum cellae. And behind it, we have dorsum cellae. So again, Cella tercica, tuberculum cellae, dorsum cellae. So tuberculum cellae anteriorly are at the front, dorsum cellae at the back, 
stellar tricycle in the center where the pituitary gland sits. So now we're going to look on the holes or the foramen in the middle cranial fossa. So these are the most numerous or the, these have the most number of holes in the entire brain or the base of the brain. So let's look at this one here. It looks a little big. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's like a fissure right here, right under this bone. So this bone right here, let me use another pointer. This is the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. So for the sphenoid bone, we have a lesser wing and a greater wing. So the lesser wing is this ridge right here and the greater wing is down here, deep to it. So the lesser wing, underneath the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, we have the superior orbital fissure and it goes through the eye if you're looking at the front. So that's that and through the superior orbital fissure we have a number of nerves. We have the ophthalmic nerve going through it. Nerve 3, 4, 5A and nerve 6 goes through the superior orbital fissure. The so nerve 3, ocular motor nerve. Nerve 4, trochlear nerve. Nerve 5A, ophthalmic nerve. And nerve 6, abducent nerve goes through the superior orbital fissure right here under the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. So the next one, below the lesser wing of the sphenoid, we have this round hole right there where you can see the probe. Let me use a colored pin. Where you see that pink pin, that round hole is foramen rotundum. And what goes to the foramen rotundum is the maxillary nerve right here so next one we're looking at this big one here and it's oval it's the other shape of an oval so we call it foramen ovale and what goes through foramen ovale we have four things going through foramen ovale mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve as well as the emissary vein goes through foramen ovale. That's the oval foramen. So that's it for foramen ovale. So like posterior to foramen ovale, you can see this tiny hole right here. Let me try to use a drop a colored pin through it. Can you see that? It's too white. Okay, we can see it. So right behind foramen Ovale is foramen spinosum. So you hear spinosum, I think of something very small. It's a tiny hole behind foramen ovale. So the next one I'm going to show you guys is. All right, just before I tell you about another one, let me tell you what goes through the foramen spinosum. Remember, the foramen spinosum is right below the foramen ovale, right here. So what goes through the foramen spinosum is the middle meningeal artery and vein as well as the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve. So just think about the M's. The M's go through spinosum. Middle meningeal artery and vein as well as the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve. So that's basically all the M's go through spinosum. And let me go to another one which is right here. So here we have foramen ovale right at this oval one here and then you see we have this little boundary then we go into another hole and this hole right here is the foramen lacerum. Foramen lacerum and what goes through foramen lacerum is the inferior the interior carotid artery or the internal carotid artery as well as the internal carotid nerve plexus goes through the Foramen lacerum. Mm -hmm. So let's just do a quick review of the ones we have here. Remember we have optic canal for the optic nerve. 
the bigger one is a superior orbital fissure for nerve 3 4 and 5 a and nerve 6 then we have foramen rotundum for a maxillary nerve we have foramen ovale for four things mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve as well as the emissary vein we have spinosum for the M's, and that's basically middle meningeal artery and vein and the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve as well as the foramen lacerum right at the border from foramen ovale which have the in interior carotid artery as well as the interior carotid nerve plexuses so that's basically it for the middle cranial fossa and i'm going to now jump to the posterior cranial fossa so the posterior cranial fossa is here at the back so the biggest prominence you see here is called the foramen magnum when you hear about magnum you think about something big so this big one is the foramen magnum and this is where the spinal cord travels through so it goes through like this foramen magnum for the spinal cord so above the foramen magnum we're going to look at this one so we're going to look at this ridge you can see this ridge here we call this the petrous part of the temporal bone so for the petrous part of the temporal bone we have a little hole in it you can see it right there so what goes through the petrous part of the temporal bone is the internal acoustic meatus host the facial nerve and right below the facial nerve is another foramen which is this hole right here and that's the jugular foramen so lots of things goes through the jugular foramen like cranial nerve number 8, 9, 10 and 11 goes through the jugular foramen so that's the main one that goes through the jugular foramen is the glossopharyngeal nerve that is of high importance and I'm just going to tell you about that one. The glossopharyngeal nerve goes through the jugular foramen and another foramen right here like it's a little bit above the foramen magnum like you can just see it right there. This is for cranial nerve number 12 which is the hypoglossal nerve. Okay. So for our review section guys, so I just labeled the entire skull or the entire foramens in the skull. So remember, that's basically, whoa, so don't stop it. So we just did a 360 on our skull, but it's still intact. We're still good. So I'm just going to look at the different pins and each pin is in a foramen. I'm going to just remove a pin and review the foramen or the area so let's start with this one so right here i just removed this pin from here which is the frontal air sinus so I just remove that pin frontal air sinus the next one i'm removing this pin this pin was in this hole above crista galli above the ethmoid bone is this little hole we call it foramen cecum the next pin is this one. I'm pulling this out from the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. And here is the olfactory nerve that's responsible for smelling, so your sense of smell. So that's it for the anterior cranial fossa. Crista galli, cribriform plate, foramen cecum, frontal air sinus as well as this one in the pink it goes to the eye so this one is coming from the optic canal so that's coming from the optic canal that's aiding you seeing things and even to see this video so the next one i'm jumping now to our middle cranial fossa so this is my middle cranial fossa and i'm this as i said labeling this bone is the lesser wing of my sphenoid bone and the sphenoid bone is responsible for my middle cranial fossa this is the lesser wing of my sphenoidal bone and this is my greater wing of my sphenoid bone so underneath my lesser wing i have this probe 
and it's through a big fissure so it's a big hole I'm not sure if you can see it properly but it's right under the lesser wing coming medially and it's in through my superior orbital fissure when I push it at the front it goes through my eye so you can probably see it through going through the eye let me see if you can see it going through the eye can you see that going through the eye so those are the nerve that goes through the eye so that's nerve 3 ocular motor nerve nerve 4 trochlear nerve nerve 5a that's the ophthalmic nerve as well as nerve 6 abducens nerve goes through the eye and aid in the eye movement and seeing and all those things so that's a superior orbital fish i just took my probe out of so the next thing i'm going to do right below my superior orbital fissure is this one that my probe fell out of is this round hole and this round hole is my forming rotundum when you think about round think about row round rotundum and what goes through my rotundum is my maxillary nerve right below the superior orbital fissure forming rotundum for my maxillary nerve the next one is this blue one here you can see me removing my pen and it's oval in shape so that's my foramen ovale so let me remove that so what goes through my foramen ovale is mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve as well as my emissary vein and so my foramen spinosum have my M, so that's the middle meningeal artery and vein, and the meningeal branch of my mandibular nerve. So that's my foramen spinosum. So right next to my foramen ovale, separated by a little boundary, my probe fell out. The foramen lacerum, and that's responsible for the interior carotid artery and then interior carotid nerve plexus so that's forming lacerum the next thing i want to review with you guys are my red probe is or my red pin this area is the cell of tercica so it's like a pit there's no actual holes so this hole was just bored because the skull is get, probably getting old or something there's no hole so this is a pit or a depression and this is where your pituitary gland sit so anteriorly we have the tuberculum cellae posteriorly we have the dorsum cellae and in the middle we have the pituitary gland sitting there and right above that right above our tuberculum cellae is this planar structure this flat bone is the planar spinoidale or jugum spinoidale so here remember your pituitary gland sitting in the cellar tercica in the middle cranial fossa now let me go to my posterior cranial fossa and the first thing i'm going to take out is this big probe so this big probe is responsible or is called this big probe is called the foramen magnum and what goes through the foramen magnum is your spinal cord the next one is right here in this bone called the petrous temporal bone so you have this hole right here and this hole is called the internal acoustic meatus the internal acoustic meatus and what goes through the internal acoustic meatus is the facial nerve so I remove that pin and this one right here below my internal acoustic meatus is my jugular foramen what goes through my jugular foramen the most important thing that goes through it is the glossopharyngeal nerve jugular foramen and the last one i want to tell you guys about is this one right here and it's a little bit above the foramen magnum so like right there you can probably see it right there just above the foramen magnum i remove this probe and that's our hypoglossal canal that's responsible for hypoglossal nerve. So just a general overview again, guys. Anterior cranial fossa with the ethmoid bone, 
It's the garlic, creamy foam plate, jugo marsh plain eye, speed eye dolly, frontal air sinus, middle cranial fossa, cella tersica, tuberculum celli, dorsum celli. This one I probably forgot to mention is your clivus. This is cella tersica, tuberculum celli, dorsum celli, clivus. Over here, superior orbital fissure, optic canal, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, the oval one. Right below it is foramen spinosum. Here we have foramen lacerum. Here we have our petrous temporal bone. On our petrous temporal bone, we have our internal acoustic meatus responsible for the facial nerve. Below the facial nerve, or the, below the internal acoustic meatus, we have the jugular foramen responsible for the glossopharyngeal nerve. Below that, right above the foramen magnum, is the hypoglossal canal responsible for the hypoglossal nerve. And the big one is the foramen magnum responsible for the spinal cord. So that's basically it for our base of the skull video. I hope you guys understood. If you have any more questions, just please drop them in the comment sections below and I'll be happy to help. And that's it for this week's teaching video. Until next time, see you soon. Bye.